name is Sandy and I'm going to be playing Lady Pets. My name is Zoe and I'll be going to be playing Mamfrey. My name is Jordan and I'll be playing Prince Alan and Jack Brown. My name is Brand My name is Brandon and I'll be playing uh, Dougie Tucker. Funny how one innocent work can turn an entire town upside down. Get a person trapped in a tower, cost three deaths, and almost get a child soul to God. It all started the night at the annual Proud Papa's match. The competition, a test to see who is the biggest bragger when it comes to his child, had risen to absurd heights. Dougie Tucker and Jack Bragg were the two finalists. My divorce is better than Britney Spears. Mary can sing like a song with Aunt Tap Tap Tell She Jones. Dolores has invented a truth serum. Well, for a miracle. I'm just asking, and everyone applauds and performs, and Jack is in Mr. What is all this loop about? Did someone win the lottery? Even though a Jack's daughter has stolen how many gold. Lady, Lady Patsy, unaware of the contest that has just ended, takes the pub owner at his word and flies him out for more information. Fifteen minutes later, she leaves the pub and hurries out to the castle, anxious to tell her old friend, King Avarice, what she's learned. Are you certain you heard correctly? This young woman can make gold? I assure you, Abby. They were celebrating her tour. The pub owner told me in confidence that Jack Bragg's daughter, Erin, can make gold. How fortunate we are, Lady Patsy. Had he passed at another time, we would have missed this good news. Not now. All I have to do is trick, trick the girl to become my own private gold mine. Don't you mean our gold mine? After all, I'm the one who stuck Unfortunately for Lady Patsy, the king was very greedy, and he did plan on sharing his gold mine. <coughs> Jack burst into the room with the news that Marianne was to be the new head chef for the game. While Jack was busy receiving congratulations and well wishes of love, Marianne made her way up to the castle for what she thought was a dream come true. I'm the new head chef to the king. A tired looking doorman shows her the way through the grand entry and up the fancy staircase. She eagerly follows him up and up to the tower entrance. Come in, Marianne. Have a seat. The contrast between the tower rooms and the beautiful decor and the rest of the castle is great. A rickety old table, a mattress, and a chair were the only furnishings in This was definitely not the castle. Good evening, Your Majesty. I am your new head chef, Marianne Brad. There must be a mistake. I don't need a new head chef. Excuse me? Don't take offense, my dear. I understand you are quite skilled in the kitchen, but I brought you here on another matter. Gold. We are here to make it gold. What? But I don't know how to make gold. Don't play dumb with me, girl. I know all about your special talent. From now on, you'll only be making gold for me. You're crazy. There's no way I'm making any gold for you. Not now, not ever. You'd best be careful what you say to the king, Marianne. If this room isn't filled with gold by morning, I may have to resort some threats of my own. You wouldn't want anything to happen to your father now, would you? King stands angrily out of the room, locking the door behind him. Marianne pouncing up the road, but no response to her cries for help. This is a total nightmare. I can't make gold. Who on earth can make gold? Crackle, crackle, A funny look of man, looking man appears in front. <clears throat> Who are you and where did you come from? I heard in my head when the that you said if you're following the show on the mm -hmm. I need your help. The king believes I can make gold. He is keeping me prisoner until I do. Please step me to kill my father. If I don't play this room with gold by now. Something for you, something for me, the gold and I make sure that you free. And for this service, I won't be a chance, I'll just take that gold chain from around your neck. Marianne clustered enough to protect her mm -hmm. My mother gave this to me. I would hate to part with it. Keep the necklace if you must, so it's in your father and be on deck. Marianne quickly hands over her precious necklace, and instantly the room is full of gold. Believing she has secured her freedom, she lies down and her own back and her tree is on her knees. What a magnificent sight to behold. Look at all my beautiful gold. Guards, take my gold down to the safe. Now that you have your gold, may I please go home? You're not going anywhere. I want more gold. But I fulfilled my part of the bargain. Now I have to let go. Silly girl, I'll keep you here as long as I wish. Remember, every day you fill this room with gold. 
is another day your father gets to live. Walton Tower with the king's new man, Marianne called out the wizard room. I'll fill this room with gold for the king and exchange for your bright new room. After what the wizard leaves, Marianne lies down and cries for her father, for she has nothing left to trade for gold. The next morning, as she as the guards are hauling up the last load of gold, she makes a desperate dash at the door of the freedom. Crash bang, crack. She causes quite a scene in the hall as she fights against the guards. What's going on? The noise attracts the attention of Prince Alan, who King Avarice, his evil stepfather, has stolen, stolen the throne. Who is in the tower? Stand aside and let me in. The guards hold their ground, keeping the prince from the tower. The prince decides to try a different way and goes back upstairs, while he slips out the window and climbs the tower with the bare windows above. He arrives just in time to witness Marianne's meeting. I need more gold, but I have nothing left to do. Having nothing to change my friend, I can collect my prize at another time. I will gladly trade with you at a later date if you agree to supply as much gold as the king desires. Marianne's request for an illicit supply of gold demands a heavy price, and the wizard makes long and hard to decide on things. Just one thing and I'll be done, and this gold thing is going to pay its own. Marianne agrees with her. She no longer has to worry about her plans. The gold. Her father will be safe. And because she expects to spend the rest of her life in the tower, she reasons she will never have a son to live with her. Of course, she has no idea she's about to be friends. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on in here? Why are you being held captive and who is that funny looking man? Shocked at seeing the prince poke his head through the tower window, Marianne C tells him her treasure chest. I knew my stepfather was evil, but this time he was not to me. I will see that you're set free, I promise. Noble as the princes within this are, all his attempts to help Marianne escape the gold. And so Marianne remains a prisoner in the hotel. Every night, the wizard makes the gold. Every morning, the guards carry it away. And every day, the prince scales the castle walls to spend time with Marianne. Day after day, week after week, the friendship grows until it eventually blossoms into love. Then one day, King Everest is in a fortunate accident. He is crushed by the gold he admires. No one mourns. Prince Alan regains the throne, marries Marianne, and shares the gold with all his father. Everything is perfect until. Hey everyone, come see my grandson. Isn't he the king final in Scotland? Hey, I can't all you do, Jack. He definitely didn't have the lungs. The club buzzes with excitement as Jack passes around the photos of his brand new grandson. Meanwhile, up at the <laughs> castle, Marianne's happy celebration is interrupted. Hello, Marianne. You're looking fine. I know. Come to collect with rightfully mine. All at once, the promise she made to the wizard so long ago is rushing back to her. You don't be you can't be serious. You don't really expect me to give you my son. For eleven months I gave you gold and share, and now it's time for you to pay. No, please, wait a minute. There must be something I can do. The wizard has no use for sure. He puts this off the goblins in three days ago. It suits him to have Marianne take care of a child with children, saving cocks and cool for the Three days you'll have to tell me my name. If you guess wrong, our bet stays the same. If you should win, your son will stay. But when you lose, I'll take him away. As soon as the wizard leaves, Marianne immediately has the entire town scouring the countryside for clues to the wizard's name. Every morning, the town's people will set out in search of him. And every evening, Jack delivers a long list of names. Anthony, Mark, Jerrell, Michael, Sean. For hours, she read name after name. No, 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 no. None of those could be my name. If you fail three times, your son will fail. The next night, Jack brings the wizard's long list. Angie, Bogobo, Han Gago, Jokey B, Myopo, Tengen, Sozo, Zo. Mary Ann leaves interested, hoping one of these unusual names is the wizard's. No, 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 no. None of those could be my name. If you fail again, your son's fair game. Mary Ann is troubled. She is losing, losing hope of ever saving herself. Don't worry, sweetheart. Everything will turn out all right. Jack has put on a brave face for his daughter, but as he trudges down into the village, he grows more and more discouraged. Overcome with grief, he falls to his knees in despair. Between his sobs, Jack hears the faint sound of someone singing. Something for you and something for me. So not have something that you need. Jack creeps to the bushes to see who is saying. The baby's mine, and one with you, and uncle still skin is my name. Jack pierced the strokes at the strange little man dancing around the back of the bar. I can't believe 
my look, my luck. I found the wizard. I know his name. Eager to share the news with his daughter, Jack clumsily steps on his way to the wizard. He may think he won the game, but he won't tell anyone my name. With a flick of the wrist, the wizard has Jack bound and gagged and tied to the top of the tallest tree in the woods. Powerless against the wizard magic, Jack's only hope is that his friends will be missing his name. Coincidentally, at the exact moment, he was close and pub. Something's not right. Jack is over on how old they was to raise his two names. Perhaps he has discovered the wizard's name, and now he's being held captive under a magical spell. Madame Basil only hope. The whole town follows Frank to the home of the local sorceress, Madame Fenn. Once they have a chance to knock on the front door, she bursts itself. I found Jack, follow me. Madame Fay leads them to the town through the woods to where Jack remains bound and gagged at the top of the college tree. Jimmy Bunyan scales the tree and pulls the gag from Jack. Rumpel Stillskin, his name is Rumpel Stillskin. Quickly, go tell Marianne, there's not much time left. With only minutes to spare, the group races toward the castle. Madame Fay rushes ahead to whisper something in Marianne's ear, just in the middle of time. And now we've come to the end of my game. Can you tell me, Marianne, what is my name? Rumpel Stillskin! What? How? Rumpel Stillskin! Rumpel Stillskin! Rumpel Stillskin! Stop! Stop saying my name! Marianne dances around the room, holding her son's face. Rumpel Stillskin! Rumpel Stillskin! Rumpel Stillskin! Stop! It turns out there was a reason the wizard kept his name as well. Apparently, the sign of his name can destroy him. And as Marianne repeats his name with glee, smoke steams out of his ears, his eyes roll back, and poof! Rumpel Stillskin is gone, leaving behind a small pile of dirt, a golden necklace, and a ruby ring. The baby was saved by Marianne's friends, and that is how the story ends.